I traveled to Boulder, Colorado to meet with Mickey Connolly, CEO of Conversant, at his company headquarters, where we talked about his book, The Communication Catalyst, and how to create meaningful conversations that are more effective and create actionable results. Hello, I'm Jim Canfield, CEO of Renaissance Executive Forums, and I'm really pleased to welcome you to Strategies for Success 2011. I'm happy to be with Mickey Connolly today. Mickey is CEO of Conversant and co-author of The Communication Catalyst. Welcome, Mickey. Thank you. It's good to be here. So how did The Communication Catalyst get started? Where's the beginning of this story? Well, the beginning of the story is long before the publication of that book. Uh, I'd say, for me, it started in an inquiry into how does communication affect action. Because years ago, I was in the hospitality industry. I owned some restaurants, a consulting company in the hospitality industry, and also was a principal in an advertising agency. And in that period, we opened this consulting company called Restaurant Resources, and I was startled by how people would pay us money, we would give them advice, and then they wouldn't act on it. And so back in around 1980, I really got serious looking at who in the world knows how do you communicate something so people actually do something about it. And it led to a lot of interesting places. It led to other people in advertising. It led to philosophical linguists who work on how language itself affects thinking and attitude and action. It also led to high-stakes negotiators, people in police and fire and hostage negotiations. That it's in that whole trail that I met Richard Reinischek. So Richard was a policeman, then a detective, then a chief of police, then became a social psychologist with a deep interest in social dynamics and how language affects attitude and action. And it just was that we belonged together. We needed to work on this together. So we started doing a lot of projects together and that ultimately became conversant. And then we wrote the Communication Catalyst really about what have we learned in working everything from police, fire, military, large organizations and with people in their personal relationships about how communication affects attitude and action. That communication can actually catalyze the most important intentions we have in our lives and it can also damage the most important ones. So that's the two-minute version. Mm -hmm. So if you, had, if you looked at the underlying principles of the communications catalyst, what do you hope someone takes away when they read that book? Uh, well, let me answer that question first. What do I hope they take away? I hope that when they read the book that they say, I'm noticing things I never noticed before, which makes me able to make a difference I've never been able to make before. We think that the most important thing is for people to start seeing things about how communication works that creates occasions for action they otherwise never would have had. I am someone who, let's just say I'm not a fan of that communication is soft. And when you've worked with people like we've worked who've been in very high stakes negotiations positions, who've had to run a SWAT team or a hostage team, you know, communication's not soft. In the communication catalyst, we wanted to show there is a design that is as rigorous to how communication affects attitude and action as an engineering schematic, as any of the things people normally think of as hard, like generally accepted accounting principles. I would love for people to walk away and say they now have a version of generally accepted relationship management and success acceleration principles based on how you manage the network of conversations that we live in every day. So I want them to notice things they never notice and have actions to take they never would have been able to take to make a difference they never thought they could make. 